This program features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. This is why the Nkungumu Pride is such a firm favourite. It's Kinky Tail. He just looks ready for a fight. This is still her territory. The Avoca boys are here to stay. Ooh. How insane was that? Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Safari Lives, our final episode for the year 2018. And what a special episode is going to be. We're not only going to be recapping the last two weeks that we have been out here in the wilderness, we're going to be looking at the weather system that is moving in because it is green and we have some rain expected on the horizon. It is a beautiful afternoon, 24 degrees Celsius, 83 degrees Fahrenheit. Not so hot, very balmy. But anyway, we're also going to be looking at the year in review. My name is Steve Folgamage. I'm joined on, cap on camera by David Hello. Eastor. And what a fantastic afternoon is going to be but first of all let's go and look at what our characters are up to this week it has been a busy and exciting two weeks in the summer heat of the Sabi sands the rain has brought the trees to life and provided small relief to the muddy wallows that dot the landscape the Duke of Juma searched the dense woodland for a meal while Hosanna and Tani turned up on tortured to the east the little chief returned to his usual hangouts near Voyatella Pan. The queen followed suit, however, she kept to the eastern reaches of Juma. The Unkuhuma pride made a return to the western fringes, if only for a short while, before traversing the length of Juma and onto Chitwa Chitwa, followed closely by the seemingly inseparable Mangeni males. The Juma den remains active, although activity around the den has changed of late, no doubt due to the scorching temperatures. Up in the Mara Triangle, the short rains have finally arrived, soaking the landscape with the downpours of life-giving rain, making access at times rather difficult. The Olalola Pride continues to grow in strength, keeping to their usual range at the base of the escarpment to the north. While the Sausage Tree Pride, remaining in close proximity to their cubs, keep to the pride lands of the southern reaches of the Ololola Escarpment. Welcome back. Well, as you can probably see, we are in the tent and it is a lovely afternoon to be in the tent because, well, we are going to be able to catch up some clips on the screen for you and, well, you'll be able to hear some narration through some of the wonderful moments and highlights that we at Safari Lives have enjoyed this year. Obviously, hashtag Safari Lives, send through your questions and comments. It is the final drive of the year for you to get in your one-word tweets and to get in all of the questions you've been wanting to ask, especially about your favorite characters. You can also throw them in on the YouTube chat stream and while well, bearing in mind keep all of your questions relevant to the topics at hand and well you will get your name on the screen. But anyway I'm not the only one out. We've got David Gitu up in the Mara. I wonder what he's up to. Probably Sausage Tree Pride. Let's go see. Hello hello everyone and how are you all doing on this last day of 2018? I hope everybody is doing very well. And one welcome to our PM or our sunset drive from the Mara Triangle, Kenya. And we've got a lioness there to say goodbye to 2018. How does that sound? She looks like she's panting, a big belly. And I got a feeling this lioness could be pregnant. I'm not very sure, but chances are she could be pregnant. Who knows? And maybe 2019, she'll be having new cubs. How nice is that? Well, nothing has changed because my name is David and with me on this last day of the year is Bungay. Bungay, good afternoon, sir. Are you excited, Bungay, for the end of the year? Bungay says yes, he's excited. And again, back to our lioness there who is panting and she is a member of what we call the Olololo Pride. She is a member of that particular pride. I do not know where the other members are, but she's one among the 16 that we see in that group. We'll have a lot of actions, a lot of attractions for the better part of the year. 
And as you have always said before, don't forget to send comments. Don't forget to ask us questions using hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. Well, pretty warm day uh, because it seems like it might rain, but at the moment it looks good, feels warm. 78 degrees Fahrenheit and 26 degrees Celsius here in the Mara Triangle. Well, there's a gentleman I've always believed have such a wonderful smile, and I'm sure he wants to talk to you on this last day of 2018. What a great afternoon. Look at that. I've got a watchdog. As like we saw this morning, I started with a watchdog. Afternoon, a watchdog again. A good afternoon and most of all, welcome to the beginning of the afternoon safari. This is Sydney Fumurani Mikosi and I am traveling with Senzo who is my camera operator. We are going to try and find Tingana around the tree house dam as he has been spotted earlier coming up this side this is an interactive activity you can follow us on twitter hashtag safari live you can also follow us on youtube chat stream Tingana likes the warthogs, so I'm sure here because we've got the warthogs he's not yet here I'm gonna have to backtrack him because I was here just to check but I'm not seeing any tracks at the moment maybe he is still on his way. He must be lying down somewhere on the way. So now let's uh, quickly cross over to David. I'm sure David has got one of the lion prize. Very good. I hope, Sydney, you gave your best smile ever for 2018 as you prepare to give another one 2019. And keep in tabs with Tingana. He doesn't get out of your eyes because I'm staying with this particular female, which, as said earlier, it belongs to the Olola Pride. When they're all together, they're always 16. It is the largest pride of lions that we have in the Mara Triangle. And when they're together, when it comes to hunting, because most of the migration is gone back to Tanzania, the wildebeest are gone, the zebras are gone. When the olorals are together, they're very good in hunting big and dangerous prey. As the afternoon sun began to set, the olorol pride descended upon a buffalo herd of males. In the midst of a strategic setup, it appeared that the lions were overly confident, largely because of their inexperience. The Ololoros had the strength in their numbers, but not with much success. The buffaloes outwitted the Ololoros and foiled their plot by splitting up their formation. The energetic young lions were no match to the Dagger Boys. Forced retreat, the lions took to looking elsewhere for dinner. Welcome back live, ladies and gentlemen. And as you saw there, when the wildebeest and zebras are gone back to Tanzania to bring down the babies, and more so the wildebeest, not the zebras, the lions here in the Mara Triangle are left trying to bring down buffaloes, which are big, a lot bigger than them, but also dangerous. Now, the Ololos did their calculation and they had a judgment that it was not worth going for the buffalo. Because once in a while, when tables have turned, we have seen the buffaloes hurting the lions. And I think that was a good call. They decided not to go for the buffalo. Well, this girl is resting here in some shaded area because she is pretty hot, or it's pretty hot here, hoping to get cooler. Show me if a time comes for her to give birth. It takes about three months or so, or three months and a few days for the lioness's gestation period. And they usually have choices and they know where to bring down the cubs. Now, a few things they look and number one, or the, the number one priority is always safety. 
safety of their cabs. Then, of course, they are going to consider the weather, if it rains and it floods, what direction maybe will the water flow? If they give bath in an open area, will the cabs be affected? So, number one, they make sure most likely there are no predators around that area. And the biggest concerns are either leopards or hyenas. Once they take care of that, other predators like cheetahs, they can sort. Wild dogs is another concern to their cubs. And then once they're in a safe area, then they look how warm will that area be. Is it a cave? Is it a little burrow? Is it kind of a hole? Is it under trees? Is it under some crevices of rocks? All those are factors that these lionesses will decide. Well, behind her, where she is, the little forest, I'm sure Bungay can pan, and Bungay is the gentleman who is filming with me today. And in that forest there, they have their like, little caves or holes where we have known lions giving bath. They always disappear and then just show up with the cubs when they are about six or seven days, six or seven days old, and then you can start enjoying them. Well, I'm gonna spend here another few more minutes and see if cat gonna you know wake up and move. But as a wait to do that, we'll take you to Steve over back in the tent. Thanks, Gigi. What a special pride the Olololo pride is. Spent many, many times, or much time with them, should I say, during the migration. They were just smashing wildebeest left, right and centre. I think I went down the mountain once from the top of the escarpment and I found five kills with the pride split out, two and three individuals per wildebeest. It was just absolute madness. Well, I also spent a lot of time with another pride up there, a very small pride of five. Probably my favourite pride in the Mara just because of the time I spent with them. Lichi and Batsanat lead the helm. Definitely a very special pride to witness. Let's go and see the Uwina pride. Come, let's check this clip, man. Hello, everybody. Well, aren't they such a special pride of lions? Three individual cubs at one stage during this year. Unfortunately, lost their one young blonde lady. We're not sure exactly what happened, but the terrain that they spend time in has always been a very special one. Very nice and open, very easy access for the vehicle. But unfortunately, they found themselves constantly in the middle of the sausage tree pride as well as the Olololos, and not to mention the marauding clans of the happy zebras, who there you can see coming in their very evil eyes. Very evil stares. And well, the competition between such a small pride and large amalgamated groups of hyena really just wasn't anything that pride was able to deal with at the time. With their three youngsters really not adding any value. A cohesive unit of hyena coming in as one. Something I was really hoping to see up there. The one scene with the Owino pride when they killed the wildebeest. It was quite amazing. Pauline, what an amazing pride indeed. And as it probably happened many times to them, this was the ending of many of their kills, as the happy zebras in this case were able to basically capture and take away the food from them. Because when you've only got two adults, it's very difficult to really hold any front sort of rein against uh, marauding pride. Oh, sorry, should I say clan of hyena? But there they go. Butternut in the front, lychee coming up behind. A little bit paler in colour, lychee. And butternut a little bit more orange, like that sunset. Nothing quite beats the Mara landscape when it comes to the sunrises and sunsets with the open expanse, the, the Ololo range, the, the, the nice beautiful shepherd trees and tortured trees. It is a got to have a special place in my heart for sure. Um, people pay huge dollars to spend time up that part of the world and well, we get paid to go and spend time there. Taz, you want to know how far they go to look for prey? It really depends. Um, obviously, there's an abundance of prey in the Mara when there's a migration. But as the migration sort of dwindles and moves off, uh, then they've got to go probably a little bit further. But there is still lots of warthog around. You see that a lot of the prides supplement their prey uh, intake by hunting warthog. And there are plenty of warthog up in the Mara. And obviously, then also they need to supplement it with buffalo, uh, which, as you saw with David there, can be rather tricky. Uh, you need the experience and you need strength and I wasn't yet able to witness the Awinos tackling anything as large as a buffalo even an adult wildebeest is a tricky one for a pride to bring down sometimes so the danger of the horns um, can lead to injury 
and who knows what happened to the youngster in that pride. Um, and we did see the young male had some really crazy injuries at one point that we thought you know, were really going to influence his ability to move. But he kept up with the pride as they kept really close movements around their territory as food was abundant. But anyway, Sydney is on the search for Tingana. I gave him a message just now to see if he can find him in the area we left him. But let's go see. He is an expert trucker after all. I am checking everywhere here trying to get hold of the tracks for Tingana. I can see that the vehicles has just been everywhere here and it's not easy. The sun is too bright. Trekking is not easy this afternoon. However, when I'm looking for uh, this beautiful Duke of Juma, I want to show you what has been happening. Some lions, Unkuhumas, visited the area last week. The Unkuhuma pride were on the move, exploring outside the borders of the Juma Reserve. They were in no rush, enjoying the morning stroll. The Mangeni male was not far behind. While in the company of the Unkuhumas, the Mangeni's mage continues to heal. And the Talamati male was one of the last to cross. It seems the growing pride continues to prosper. It's always very good to see that the extension of the pride with the Mangeni is doing much better as they are now showing some recovery. So I'm very sure they are going to do well. So they are attacked by a very dangerous disease. Mange is not a simple disease, it is a contagious disease. Uh, but also the Unkuhumas, they are also at high risk because when the animals are feeding together, playing together, and breathing, sharing some breath together, it can cause problems when it comes to these kind of contagious diseases. The lions on coalitions sometimes, mostly, they are closely related. And sometimes you can find also the other members who are not uh, originally from the original pride, consisting a coalition. Just like what we have seen when the Mangeni males are trying to force themselves uh, into the Unkuhuma pride. If you check, it's very difficult for the lions to change the memberships, but they are forcing themselves and suddenly they will get accepted. <laughs> Talking about the lions, let's cross over to David. He is lucky already with the lions. Yes, I think today we need to talk a lot of cuts being Safari Lives Day and our lioness decided to turn around the other way and just look at her belly. Number one, look at the panting. Well, when lions are full or when they have eaten a lot and in general cut, they tend to pant. As much as today is a hot day, but that belly to me is bulging. It looks bigger than the normal cut that would have had a meal. So definitely she is pregnant. Now there's another pride of lions I follow here that is called the Sausage Pride, much further from where I am. And there are two females in that pride that are pregnant and we are thinking the new year will also give us new cubs. So this one might be joining the league of those two other girls. And I can't guess, sometimes it's difficult. They might look big and they've got a long way to go. Or she could be any time in the next one or two weeks. Who knows? So for those of you who are joining us now, this is one member of the Olalola Pride. And the Olalola Pride was named Olalola because it's an escarpment near their territory that is called Olalola. So when together again, there are 16. So this is just one of the many 
and I wouldn't to know where the others are. And I'm very impressed to hear you're all happy because this will mean new additions, new additions of cabs. Cabs uh, come next year, which is maybe tomorrow. And the Sausage of Pride already got three cabs. So if one of the females in that Pride could kink tail and another one more female get cabs, and assuming they each get two, then we'll be having two, two, four plus three, seven. And you should have a wonderful school of baby lion cubs, you know, in the Mara. Now, I don't know how many this one will be carrying, but lions will, you know, give birth anything, one to four cubs, but an average of two to three. Now, this lioness here seems to be a little bit flat and just enjoying her nap. And because of her condition, I want to give her her space and wish maybe the next time around I see her, she'll be having some cubs. In the meantime, we'll go back to the tent, to Steve Ovo, and he'll tell us more about my favorite pride of lions in the Mara Triangle. Thanks, Gigi. Well, I'm just hanging out with a few friends here to see out the new year. They're a little bit slow. I think they had a long year themselves, um, but the Sausage Tree Pride has indeed been having a very, very special year. Uh, well, there's been some cubs, there's been some losses, and there's been some new additions as well that have come and gone. Well, slowly they grow in ranks, and well, they're doing very well down in the south. And well, let's go catch up with the Sausage Tree Pride. And there you see Kapuli with one of the members of the Pride surveying those areas and well what do we see there but a sausage tree pride and surprisingly enough a sausage tree should I say surprisingly enough something inside of the tree who I believe is named tree climbing lioness she is one of the individuals with cubs at the moment there Kapuli once again with a little ring on the nose Hello, MD. Lion tracks, yes, you can tell the difference between male and female by the track. Um, you can't really tell it too easily when they're younger, um, but male tracks are much wider. The toes are, are splayed out much more, and they actually stand out a little bit more to the side than females. They are invariably much bigger, probably about a centimeter and a half bigger than the female, and that's to support that big weight. You can see the big weight of this male coming in, one of the young sausage tree pride males as they feed on many buffalo throughout the year. And well, new additions to the pride need to be generated somehow, and Kapuli was the initial father, we believe. The cubs that are now with the pride are very interesting to know who is the real dad. Because there's one of the youngsters, very, very cute indeed, little ball of fluff, and two more balls of fluff. And well, the sausage tree pride, really special moments down there, as there are three currently still with the pride. And well, hopefully, with yes, Sinek a great year for the sausages, and hopefully, we'll see that pride grow even stronger so they'll be able to catch the buffalo and eventually be able to sneak up to the giraffe that they've really tried very hard to do. But anyway, as they survey their pride lands, what can you do but watch and enjoy? Magnificent lions. The area down there was so abundant with game in the time I was down there. Obviously, we had a few signal issues when it came to recording some of the stuff, but what unbelievable scenes with the sausages basically staying within that drainage system um, that is just there below Marangai, which is one of the camps where we have one of our signal base stations. And, well, they were there pretty much all the time. I've never seen lions so stationary in one area in my life. And, well, in the Mara, it was quite a nice thing because the area is enormous. Becky, there is almost nothing cuter than a lion cub. And I know a lot of people, James and Brent, I think, think lion cubs are the cutest. I think Tristan is on the same page as me, and we think leopard cubs are cuter. Dalvi? Darby thinks lion cubs are cuter. Emma says you're going to see it later, but you can all make your own decision. Let's have a one-word tweet, shall we? Lion or leopard cub? Who is the cutest? One-word tweet, hashtag Safari Live. Let us know what you think. No answers wrong. Let's just see what the consensus can go for. We might even do a little poll there. I don't know how this all works. I just tell you to send it through and the girls in FC sort it all out. But anyway, what a marvellous time we have had this year. The girl and Luke, Luke has got quite long hair, and when Luke did a trip up into sort of 
at the Central Africa area hitchhiking, most of the people he met thought he was a girl. So, <laughs> sorry, Luki, that one is for you. He had long hair, and some people wanted to buy him. <laughs> Very interesting stories for another day. But anyway, some animal that you will never, ever confuse for a female. Sydney's on the search for the Jukujuma. I'm still in the middle of a search, looking for the leopards. Leopards, they do have beautiful cubs, and that is my special preference. The leopard cubs are so cute. <laughs> when I got here, Talamba was still very small, and she was so beautiful. So here, the tracks of these cat, big Duke of Juma, got disappeared somewhere around three hours them, and here where I'm taking. I just want to see if he came out somewhere here. He must be in one of the drainage lines. <laughs> Hopefully a Tingana as well. Must have been very cute when he was still a calf. You can see today, Tingana looks beautiful. So, he looks very pretty good. So, I hope we're gonna see him this afternoon. So now I want to carry on checking. While doing that, let's quickly cross over to David by the Masai Mara. Well, coincidentally, I think I'll agree with my brothers that uh, leopard cubs are the cutest. The cutest in this sense, I mean, uh, when it comes to play, they don't play as much as lion cubs. They don't play as long time because lion cubs could play like, for example, 20, 30 minutes non-stop. You know, an extended period of time playing, playing, jumping, scratching, eating grass, you know, rolling and uh, sharpening the teeth and uh, sharpening their clothes. But leopard cubs, for me, play a shorter period than lion cubs. But that short period they play is just amazing. and. More often than not, I would say, Leo Cubs cub, apparently play on their own. So there's too much going on the sun on this side. That's why I'm closing my eyes. So Leo cub, Leopard Cubs in general will play on their own. And if they don't play on their own, they'll play with their mothers. And it becomes <laughs> more entertaining because it's such a small little age, say three months, four months age of a baby, playing with, say, four or five-year-old mother, you know? So you're imagining they have different brain wavelengths but the mother will always try and accommodate this baby and try and read her next move as she plays uh, with her. But lion cubs, because lions are very social, you'll get three, four, five females, like the Olololos. Yes, and uh, very good uh, to remind me that. Yes, I saw Talamba playing with the uh, Tani when I was in Juma. So Talamba that time when I was there, she was about uh, six, seven months. And of course, uh, Tandi, I guess now, is about 11, 12 years. So you're saying a cub of about a year old or a couple of months, nine, 10 months old, playing with a mother who is 12 years. Those are two different people. And the mother has always to think ahead of the cub, you know, what she wants to do. If the cub does something silly, the mother has to be very careful that the cub doesn't get hurt. So for that reason, I would say it's more fun to see leopard cubs playing than the lion cubs. So I would agree with Steve and Sydney. And I was saying lions in general are very social. So you could get, say, a pride having about what? Five, six cubs playing together. So... For that reason, uh, it becomes not as fun to see three, four cubs playing together and like one cub playing with a mother. And I'm sure Sydney is very happy to hear 
that I have concurred with him and agreed with him on this last day of 2018. Right, Sydney? A Tingana is hiding somewhere in this block here on my right hand side. It looks very much thick at the moment. However, I want to show you what Tingana has been doing during the course of the week. The aging Duke of Juma continues to patrol his territory, alert and aware, taking in the greening landscape. The lush vegetation means an assortment of possible prey. Thus, Tingana pursued his mission and waited for some form of sustenance to stroll by. So you can see that uh, Tingana has got quite a huge responsibility. Holding a territory is not an easy exercise. You've got to defend it against the other competitors. I would like to hear from you. You can send us questions on Twitter, hashtag Safari Live. So this area where I am at the moment, they are not threats at all. So you can see that there is a predator in the area because the animals, they are avoiding this area. I am not seeing animals, not even an impala or a daker here. It's a good sign that there is a predator in the area. <laughs> Long live the Duke. Long live the Duke. <laughs> He must come out here so that we can see, he can at least uh, receive all these commands by himself. <laughs> so now let's quickly cross back to Steve and hear more about the Unkuhumas. Well, thanks, Siddhas. I saw you doing your little Duke, long live the Duke chant. Fantastic. He is looking so strong. I mean, this morning when we found him, he was looking really, really in good condition. But anyway, we're moving on to the Unkohuma pride. And what a pride they have been. Obviously, they move through Juma very, very quickly. They see it as a very small area in their entirety of a pride sort of territory. And while they've had some losses this year, uh, they had some cubs earlier this year, Amber Eyes having some tragedy as well, which has been a very interesting year for them as well but then the addition of the new um, Talamati male and then the followers on well what an interesting story we have with them well the Unkuhuma Pride here they are I think my first week with Senzo when they found two tortoises and I think I assured everybody that they would not get into the shell uh, lo and behold after seven adult set of individuals had had a go at it they eventually got through and the poor tortoise well did not live to see another day. It was a very sad tale. And there we go. There's some of the youngsters that were with the pride earlier in the year and doing what they do best. There we go. Beautiful little youngster. But the disease that moved into them that really sort of emanciated the youngsters was really quite sad. Uh, Paula, you want to know if the lionesses will leave the pride? Well, uh, the only time you see lionesses leave pride... Sorry, Carla is when uh, they, they get too big and maybe the food resource decreases a bit like what happened with the sausage tree pride and the winos. Uh, the females actually moved away, uh, forming a new pride. Um, and that's what happens in food avail low, low food availability, where lionesses will maybe band together and move off together with their cubs to form what we call a breakaway pride. The, the uh, Unkuhuma pride is still quite small. Um, the young male might move off, but they will look quite good in a while um, if they keep their ranks going. And this was one of those scenes with Amber Eyes when she was just really dominating a kill just here on quarantine. I think there was a baby zebra or an adult zebra, in fact, 
And well, this competition, this is what eventually leads to a pride breaking up because the competition becomes so fierce between females and the food becomes less. So they fight more and fight more. And that's what happened with the uh, sausage tree pride, I believe. They actually pushed their wieners away by killing their young cub. So it was a very sad story. But here you can see the one youngster trying to get in there. And it's a very difficult affair trying to get into the food and we got the Birmingham boys their last sort of stages up here this was a, a scene with Tino he spent some time with uh, Amber Eyes when she came into Estrus and he followed them for some time and then we found uh, we found Nene with her as well mating so that's probably what led to the cubs that she had earlier this year which she had over on the Arethusa side we never saw them here's the beautiful Talamati male and well they think twice about looking at that hippo that was in the background once again these mangeni males who seem to be following the pride around in endless wonder really are quite a sight to be seen but this is when they're at their worst when they were looking as bad as the ground does Tuti, you wonder if they can pass the mange on? Yes, it is. Oh, did they pass away? Sorry. Um, it can pass, possibly kill an animal. I'm not sure if deaths are recorded, but it can lead to seriously loss of condition. And loss of condition or even um, isolation from the pride can lead to them becoming quite sort of left alone and weak. So it could invariably lead to death, um, but I'm not sure exactly how often that happens. But the queen, should we say, of the Unkuhuma pride, the big and powerful amber eyes whose track is quite difficult to discern from that of a male talking about tracks before you could see her track is often very big but she had another relationship with the new boys that moved in after the evokers moved down south and we believe possibly that she also had some cubs with these individuals this was just the other day where she was with an evoker again so she's coming to Easter for a third time this year which is not uncommon um, but this must be a wonderful sight on the tortured side we don't see too many geological formations like that but to see lion prides coming together in beautiful landscape like that is very very special Dave and I were just discussing a sighting we had with the Unkuhumas earlier this year when they were playing in the riverbed and uh, the, David was talking earlier, David Gita, about how lion cubs can play and that youngster, that last surviving cub of the pride that passed away quite a few months ago, she was running around with one of the youngsters and they were ganging up on one of the other, other sub-adult females and it was probably the most awesome lion playing segments I've ever witnessed and I think the entire show was running around, Dave and myself filming this lions running up and down, up and down, up and down and the little youngster would come in as a number two, the first one to go for the tackle and she would jump on the back and would tackle one of the feet females onto the ground it happened in the dry riverbed and the scenes were just fantastic and it's not often you get to see that in the sunlight it happens at night as they start moving around girl on fire how many unkuhumas i believe there are 11 and the talamati male now is pushing up to 12 and that is quite important for the other young male as we've discussed at length this year because he he's coming of age where he will get beaten by those evoker males that are coming through but at least he's got a better chance of if he gets chased off possibly the telemati males moved away from the north because of the evoker males they are really staking a claim in the north and before we hear them all the time we don't get to see them as much as we'd like to but now these two boys are going to form a little bit of a brotherhood and well as sydney was saying coalitions aren't necessarily always related there can sometimes be males that come together albeit we believe the telemati's and Oklahoma's are cousins so possibly a breakaway at some stage down the line when the emails moved off but the inclusion of these two males did I miss something there no. I just heard some beeping inclusion of these two males are boistering or bolstering the prize uh, numbers I haven't seen the Nguma since I've been back apart from amber eyes the other day so I'd like to see how big the young male is getting and to see how pretty this beautiful Talamati male is but the two of them will be able to move off maybe somewhere else in the Kruger and a pair period of time they might be able to get all the way to the north the south anywhere else in the Kruger where they'll be able to stamp their claim well the results are just in it appears that 68 percent of you agree with myself Sydney and David Gigi that the lion cubs are not as cute as leopard cubs well no one is wrong or right in this answer but if you spend time with both of them they are super super cute well we are going to continue with our wonderful stories this afternoon 
stream. Don't forget to keep sending through your questions to hashtag Safari Live or throw them in the YouTube chat stream. Uh, we're quite enjoying this afternoon. It's actually quite nice and breezy in the tent. But let's go see if David has managed to find any lion cubs. Well, I'm very happy like almost all of us. We, the guides here in Africa, we have concurred with all of you view that uh, leopard cubs are the sweetest to see either playing or just, you know, resting with their mothers. Which sounds good that we'll all end the year on one speed, one page and in agreement. So I decided to leave my one female lioness the member of the Olololos just to, you know, rest under that particular shade. You could see she was struggling not to breathe but to pant, you know, because of the heat of the day and imagining she's pregnant. And I moved on. And what I want to try and do now is to find out the rest of the pride where they are. I had seen them early this morning and I'm trying to think they did not go very far from where I saw them. Once it gets hot and the lioness enter a particular shaded place, the lioness tend to hang around in that area until it cools off. So that, at the moment, it's my destination, and hopefully I'll be able to catch up with them. Again, as I said earlier, this is the largest pride of lions. Deborah, uh, what do I want to tell you, Deborah? Let me first tell you Happy New Year, Deborah. All right, sounds good. And of course, I mean, it could be possible we might end up seeing a savocat instead of uh, the rest of the pride of the Ololos. I'll tell you what, if I get that pride of the Ololos and we take a few pictures for you and show you some nice, uh, you know, uh, hopefully they'll be playing, I'll then embark myself on a mission to try and get all the savocat for you. Bungay, did you copy that? So Debra Bunge is my camera operator today and he says, yeah, him and me will combine forces and we'll try to look for a savocat, which will be a good player. I mean, they are here, we know them, they're in the Mara, they're in South Africa. It's always a question of being lucky and being there at the right time. So let's cross fingers. And we see how lucky it could be. My signal might be getting a little bit weak. Why don't we go back to the tent to Stivopo? Thanks, Gigi. It is looking super green in the Mara. Really, really nice after all the rains you've been having, no doubt. Uh, we would love a little bit more of that. But anyway, stories about the Mara from this year come to sort of a sad conclusion or sad tale with, well, the death, disappearance or, or passing away of a very special and favorite cheetah that uh, Scott Dyson spent an enormous amount of time with and well she provided us with some very special moments most of this year. Scott he spent time down in the south with Naritoy herself. Let's go and catch up with the old girl. Beautiful scenes as the cheetah moves through the long grass. I remember these moments with Scott how the cheetah couldn't even see the prey animals. Well her two boys were with her for much of that time as she taught them how to play, how to catch food and many times up at these trees. I actually had a picnic at that tree before I left. Very, very special. The cheetah were not there at the time, Emma, but um, I was looking for them. But then they, you can see this was when Naratoy was looking for her one boy that had disappeared. And they went on quite a search, even returning back to the same place, the same tree, all their usual haunts. Our hyenas even moved in to come for a picnic, but sadly, as it turned out, the youngster was never returned to her mum. It was very heartbreaking, DR, but it seems as if um, one of the cheetahs up there has seems to have sort of adopted the young boy that was left without a mum, and so things seem to be on the up for him, because we need more cheetah up in the Mara. They are a very special spectacle. I had some wonderful times up in... Um, the Mara. I didn't see Naratoi when I was up there. I did look. I did spend some time in the south looking in all the places where she'd been and unfortunately wasn't able to come across her at all. But I mean it was time of abundance. There were so many animals around and the lions were just everywhere. 
Paula, she was a very pretty girl and such a good mum indeed. She provided lots and lots of, of time and, and sightings out there for everybody and so fantastic to be able to view cheetah in the open landscape like that. And nowhere else can you see things like that in the Mara Serengeti ecosystem. So we do see cheetah down here from time to time. Uh, sadly, they don't stick around for too long due to just the de density of the vegetation. Uh, but as I said up there in the Mara, you could shake a stick and a lion would fall out and they were just everywhere. Wherever you looked, wherever you turned lions and well the cheetah just doesn't do well against lions at all yes so um i think i mentioned that just before that there are rumors that naratoi's uh, sister adopted the son so it looks like he's in good hands he'll still be able to maybe become an adult and learn all of the final necessary sort of trades and trials of being a cheetah because to be able to survive out there you've got to be very wily you've got to know how to catch the right food you've got to know the right areas and obviously the seasonality of the migration shifts the predators up and down because of the food resource and well as you've seen the grass in some of those scenes how could you evade a lion if it was trying to stalk you in that long grass very very tricky so we don't see such long grass down here i don't know how we'd conduct bushwalks if we did and we'd get very very wet legs and socks and i think the ticks would get up to us over here but the animals seem to survive a bear and to see those long grass habitats go from extremely tall to almost nothing in a period of a few weeks just to go goes to show the biomass that is not only produced but consumed by the thousands millions of animals that are moving through the open landscape and well the cheetah's favorite food the thompson's gazelle were definitely in huge abundance while i was up there and those burnt areas made it very very useful for them to survive and well i had a few cheetah in my time there but i never managed to see naratoi but anyway david had a cheetah the other day but i'm not sure what his name was i might have seen him but let's go and see if he's had any luck finding him. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think I got lucky at one point, Babunge, excuse me, because of letting my foot off the brake pedal rather late, and I think I found the prey I've been looking for, that is called the Olorolo, where we saw one female. Now we have more or less the rest of the pride with us right here. And you remember Ali was saying when it gets hot they look for shaded areas? So I think when they left in the morning they moved about one kilometer away from where I had them this morning. And this is the Olero Pride. And I was just counting these ones quickly and I found there are 11 of them together. How cool is this? So for those of you who are joining us now, this pride is called the Olololo. And it is in the Mara Triangle in Kenya. And remember We'll always request you to send us questions or comments which gives us lots of joy using hashtag safari live on twitter you can ask us where are these lions together at this point where do i think they're going i have no idea but just as the other day my friend and guide by the name of tristan had a very exciting moment with this pride of lions in the darkness tristan found the young members of the ololo lions puzzled and he was very curious. His curiosity revealed to him they were playing with a coiled up pangolin. One of the young males appeared frustrated by its armor of sharp scales. And pretty soon he gave up not wanting to take chances. After a few breaths to recover from the ordeal, Tristan was very pleased. The pangolin uncoiled, giving him the perfect view of his petite profile before winding back to rest. Welcome back live, ladies and gentlemen. And I'll tell you, that particular night when we were having dinner with Tristan, because he was here in Kenya before he left for South Africa the other day, he was the most excited boy I've ever seen. If I'm not wrong, he told me either that was his second pangolin or it was like his first pangolin to see in the Mara. He was full of joy and me, I was not full of joy. I was full of jealousness and I was in my heart. I wish it's me who saw that particular pangolin. But it happens once in a while. It's a question of being luck. But just to let you know, pangolins have been predated by lions for a long time. I mean, anything that has meat, ideally pangolins, I mean, lions will always go for them, including that particular pangolin. No, no, great comment. Pangolins are amazing, and especially when you see them rolling up 
uh, in that kind of uh, shell they put themselves in, and it's very spinny, I would say, it's very, the scales they, 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 they hide themselves in or they roll in as a ball. Lions cannot do much. They only need to get them off guard. Ideally, in order what we do here, we see the lions in, I mean, the pangolins in general at night. And we have always made a joke. If you see a pangolin during the day, well, that's a very big day to do maybe lottery because it's very, very, very lucky. You always see them at night. And when you see one moving during the day, what a day, you'll see. And we have said, if you are going to buy some lottery, is almost 110% you are going to win. Well, the older are moving now here and not sure where they want to go. It's still a bit warm for me, but if they're looking for food, why not? Debbie is true. They long and they always use it to and do it very well. Plenty well in the grass and the prey in general are not able to see them. So long grass Debbie, you are very correct. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, may I apologize? We had a bit of uh, gremlins there. I'm sure you lost my sound. I'm not sure it's my throat, but we are sorry about that. And for us to broadcast to you all the way from this African wilderness that we are into living rooms on your screens, we go through so many uh, technical points to, you know, to just to deliver to you. So once in a while, oops, that was a very good yawn. <clears throat> we'll always have a breakdown. I apologize for that. But I'm, yes, with my Ololos, and this is the second last to wake up. And one more left and they're all moving in a different location and not sure where exactly they want to go. When I saw them in the morning, they looked hungry and I'm very convinced at one point. Tonight, <clears throat> they could be looking for some dinner. Do you want to wake up? You're the last one standing, so you better wake up and follow your colleagues. Oh, there are two more, sorry. There are two more there. There's another one to the right. Very social cats. Okay, and that one, the second last night to wake up. Well, uh, goes down, not sure, maybe won't join the rest. So I'll just maybe leave them now and maybe swing by here much later. And I'm sure Deborah is wondering whether I'm going to look for this avocado or not. And yes, I'm going to try and do that. But in the meantime, Sydney is working very hard to look for a spotted cat in Juma. I have just found the tracks now promising that uh, Tingana is somewhere around here in these bushes. So I'm just trying now to do a final check. I checked this area a little bit earlier, but now I found some convincing evidence. We might be lucky with him here in this area today. It is not that hot this afternoon. The chances, the chances of seeing the cats, they are still very there. There's, there's no animals at all here. Normally we see a lot of wild uh, wild dogs in this area. Yeah, at the, at the moment, the problem is with the predators in the area, animals got to hide away. But the predator themselves, because of the sun, they, they got to hide. So they must be somewhere under these trees. So now let's quickly go back to Steve. Well, good luck searching there, sitters. Have any of you, ladies and gentlemen, been face to face with a leopard? A beautiful skull, isn't it? Beautiful canines there. Marvellous example. Not even a big cat, I don't think. I really don't really know how to tell the difference between a male and female from the skull. 
just the size, I suppose, and have to compare two to really get a good estimate. I'm sure someone knows where this came from. But, um, well, we've had marvellous scenes this year. As all of you know, we have got a leopard dynasty on our hands here in Juma. And, well, they are led by Tingana, followed by the little prince, Osana. There he is, the Duke, earlier this year, looking a little bit scraggly. He's not showing his limp very obviously there, but this was a time when he suddenly just materialised with that very wonky ear. James even went as, so far as to suggest maybe he had a stroke, but it's unheard of, really, in, in a leopard that we know of. But as he moved through the year, he pulled a Hukumuri impersonation there with his tongue. <laughs> his experience kept him going and well he stole enough of his son's food to be able to gain back all of the strength that he needed before he then reclaimed the stake to his throne as Hukumuri who'd moved in from the west had attempted to try and steal it from him there would be one of his characteristic calling sounds that some of the viewers back home are able to identify um, but look at the beautiful youngster who's definitely getting a lot bigger than he was when I left here a few months ago. And it has been an absolute marvellous experience spending the amount of time I have with Hosanna. I mean, just look at that. Isn't he just the best cat ever? And a little bit of a clown sometimes as well when he's hunting scrub hares. <laughs> I don't know. He has just surprised and impressed us non-stop. And, well... What better scenes than the amount of time he spent stalking and killing prey at the Voyeur Pan, even going so far as to attempt, from his early days, his terrapin catching techniques, which he seemed to have lost a little bit. This one, very sort of scared and frightened terrapin, lived to tail, lived to talk another day. Just the amazement of Hosanna coming in and spending time with the Duke. I experienced something like this on on my interview drive and well this was another incident on Vuitella Dam Wall where Tingana had stolen the kill from Osana and Tingana moved off for a moment to go and drink and well Osana moved in and got his kill back. But I mean the antics of this boy this year, we even saw it last night with Hyena. It is a non stop funny affair as well both of them will feed on a kill. And this is stuff that you know you just don't see every day folks. And well then, what is most natural and most occurring here is the Duke moving in to once again, and once again, move in and steal the kill from his son. In this incident, Tristan had been following Tingana for the longest time, and while we had been with Hassan up the tree with his Nyala, and we knew it was going to happen, and I think as the credits were rolling, that happened. Well, Father, always at the top, um, Hosanna looking at Dad while the interloper himself moved in to familiar grounds here. Yeah, this is Hukumuri himself as he moved in and started staking claim to those very vital areas within Juma. Obviously smelling the previous owners, smelling the presence of females, knowing that this is prime leopard habitat. He still, he still amazes to chill all of our hearts. Taz, what would happen if Osana leaves? I think we'd all be very sad. Well, there he goes. He is being chased by the big male Hukumuri, who, well, once again, there he's giving us the tongue that we're so familiar with. We have had marvellous scenes with him, and I'd love to see him again. But the dynasty and the dynamics that are unfolding in Juma continues as Osana once again looks on as his dad eats a stolen meal. The little chief, my favorite leopard, isn't he just so photogenic? He will marvel us non-stop. He will keep going and keep going and keep going. And, well, it just doesn't get any better. I mean, yesterday we were with, uh, we followed a hyena after having Hosanna in the morning. And we followed, uh, well, we were on our way there. We were, oh, it was so hot. It was much hotter than today. And we thought, oh, he's probably, if he's there, he's going to be very flat. So let's just bumble around a bit and do some of the chats. And then we found a hyena. Let's follow the hyena. He looks like a very interesting fella. I think it was a lady. And lo and behold, Dave, look over here. You know, Osana just comes and walks in. It was the most awesome scene. He's done that so many times to us in the past. It is just really special. And he will continue to wonder us. Um, he likes doing it during credits. Yes, I know. I think um, Tingana did that to Brian uh, in, to Byron, sorry, in his... Um, 
in his uh, credits one day. He'd been looking for him all day, and he kind of went in at the credits. Vicky Tingana looks like the Godfather. Well, he kind of, I suppose he does. We could probably get him one of those sort of hats that sort of sit off to the side, give him a bit of an accent or something. What do you think? But anyway, the, the, the power play going between Tingana and Hukumuri is an interesting one. And, well, I don't know. Let's do another one-word tweet. Tingana versus Hukumuri in a one-on-one -on -one battle. Tingana or Hukumuri? Now let's see who, who the fan favourites are here. I know most of you are probably going to go with Tingana, seeing as you've known him for so long. He is a big male leopard. Hukumuri I don't think is as or as big as Tingana once was. Um, not that I really know how big he once was, but just by the size of his neck and the skin that's getting quite sagging, Tingana was and still is a formidable adversary. But Hukumuri has got that fighter's stare. He's got that confidence inside of himself. And there's just something about the drool down here. He's a proper thug in one of those gangster movies indeed who'd win in a one-on-one battle i think there's about eight years or seven years perhaps uh, between them so the duke has got the experience on his side and hukumuri has got the youth and maybe the vitality so it would be a very interesting battle considering that most leopard interactions are dealt with just through intimidation alone without coming to blows so well let's while we wait for those one word tweets to come through and hopefully we will see who is the better of the two just from all of your opinions we're going to go back up to david in the Mara to see if he stayed with his lions. Hukumuri or Tingana, Tingana or Hukumuri. I need a few seconds to remember because when it came to bringing down animals and especially warthogs, Hukumuri was no match to Tingana. When you'd see Tingana walking with his huge dewlap, he got a massive duel up. Well, I need a couple of minutes to think who is who between Hukumuri or Tingana. We already finished the business of the cubs and we agreed the, lion, uh, the leopard cub was the best against the lion's cubs. Now, I've been able to catch up with the all of pride and I got about how many there? One, two, three, four, five of them together on a tarmac mount. And the reason they are there is because it has cooled off. And the second reason they have given themselves a vantage point to look around to see if they would be able to get something for themselves to feed on. Now, the other members are in some thickets to your right of screen, and this being five, I would imagine the other six are there. Because total what is two in the morning, why 11? And if that's the case now, we've got six there that have not come out. And again, remember, this is always a very interactive safari. Should you have any questions, please you may ask. And you can send us comments using hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. Hello. So one of them has gone mm, flat down, but the rest are still looking. And in this particular pride, there are seven youngsters that are males. Steve and Losh Gal, I think your question you're comparing the Oloro and the Marsh Pride. And if that's the thing, the Olorolos are where we are and this area is called the Oloro Territory. And and I think your question is whether initially Olorolos were part of the Marsh Pride. And they have not, or I do not think they were. Olololo has always been a separate pride and the Marsh Pride has always been a different pride. So they have never been together. But what we know, there's another pride that's called the Marsh Breakaway that initially was one huge pride and they decided to go on their own. I haven't seen them for quite some time. The other pride I've seen in this area recently is the Mara River Pride. So the Marsh Breakaways, I do not know where they are. So saying earlier, this particular pride have got seven youngsters, seven males, and there's one particular female that's fully grown in this pride, and I overheard her calling these youngsters, and I think she's going back to where their mother is. Not sure why she's calling them. And look at those nice spots. Don't you want even to have a play over there with your brother? No, she just passes, and this guy says to you, and he's rather bored. Sean, in the Mara, we got loads and loads of lion prides. 
And another yawn. You must be a very bored boy. But Sean, let's talk of the Mara Triangle itself because this is the area that we leave more. As much as once in a while we go to the side of the Mara. That one goes to some other wonderful spots. Now, in the Mara Triangle, we have over 10 prides of lions, Sean. Over 10 prides. Let me see how many I can count. One is what we got here, and this is the Olor Pride. Two, my favorite pride, the Sausage Tree Pride. Three, the Marsh Breakaway Pride. Four, the Mogoro Pride. Five, the Owinos. Six, the Salt Lake. Seven, the Perez Pride. I have to account for another three. Oh, eight, the Mara River Pride. And there are two more, two more, two more, two more. Anyway, give or take, we've got about nine, I mean, ten different prides in the Mara Triangle. So, would you imagine the other side of, of, the, of, the, of the Mara, there are loads and more of lions. Well, the most that we see in general will be the Mogoros, Owinos, and the Oloro that we got here. And uh, one more. And the Paradise. Those will be the main ones that will be seen here. And now the fact that the Ololos have decided to go somewhere to hide and they don't want many pictures, I think we had a plan with Deborah for me to look for a savukat. We'll go back to South Africa and ask Sydney or give him pressure to get us a live parallel. So we're gonna stay here for a couple of minutes and the other four are still where they were and they haven't moved but I'm sure sooner or later they're going to join the rest of the pride. Hello. So I do not know why the female called away this, uh, the, the fifth, oops, that's a big, another one, not a very big yawn, why he called away the other youngster, but these four have remained there. And sometimes as they grow older, they become a little teenage and they have a particular character they want to disobey, you know, their mothers, because I overheard her like calling them to go down. And these four have been just turning and looking at her and they're like, keep calling, but we are not coming there. Very good, very good. Sydney, Sydney, you need to get us a cut. Either get us Hukumuri, or get us Tingana, or get us Hosanna. Otherwise, I don't think you'll end your ear very well without a spotted cut. <laughs> I am going to make sure that you see a cut before this Safari Lives episode got ended. I am going to make sure that we find any of these cats. Maybe, if not the leopard, will be the lions. So I'm hoping uh, to see So now that I don't have a cat now, I want to take you back to Hosan and show how he has been doing at the beginning of festive season. Laid back and smelling the surrounding flowers, the little chief appeared to be enjoying his summer holiday. However, his playful antics were rudely interrupted. Not one to shy away from close encounters with the resident hyenas. He stood his ground, showing growth towards becoming a male leopard contender. Hosanna continued relaxed and in search of a festive feast. It's quite a very clever and interesting animal, uh, Hosanna. So I'm sure he is going to have also something planned for tonight so that he can cross over to 2019 with a male. My favorite Hosanna sighting this year, it was a combination. <laughs> Hosanna, uh, the interesting sighting was when I first saw my first dung beetle, it was the day Hosanna was playing the elephant dung. So Hosanna and the elephant dung, that was my favorite sighting. <laughs> So that is where I have learned that I must have to also get involved on this elephant dung. When I started my mic, 
I saw I was jealous because I saw Osana playing with a, an elephant down. I'm trying by all means here to see if we can find where Tingana is. But he must be lying down flat somewhere here by these trees. So now let's quickly go back to Steve and learn more about the leopard for 2018. Dung, dung, dung. It seems like Tingana is the viewer favorite. Well, of course he is. Everybody loves Tingana, don't they? Affectionately also known to some of us as Ting Tong. He is a very funny and interesting individual. Albeit, well, experience does make him a bit smarter, I suppose. Definitely lead to him being a little bit more on the top of the edge when it comes to making those quick decisions. And, well, just through intimidation, Tingana managed to keep Okumori away without any confrontation that we know of. Um, and all he did was just keep calling and keep scent marking and keep making his presence known. And, well, we saw Okumori come in the other day, came in and was gone the same evening. Just goes to show he's a little bit worried. Oh, goofy has got your heart. Well, fantastic. I think he's in many people's hearts, and I don't know what everyone will do if Tingana does decide to leave. But for now, he is still strong and still holding reign over Druma. And as I said, the hookster, he moved in for only an evening, uh, trying to stake a claim without calling. And off he went again. If he really was so confident, I'm pretty sure he would have at least called. If I do recall, I didn't hear on the radio that he had called at all. But Sydney can maybe um, refresh us and let us know if he was calling. Maybe some of you are watching and will notice if he called. If he didn't, well, then he was laying down a trail. He wasn't advertising immediate presence. And, well, the Tingana that we know, he likes to call and shout himself. And, well, according to some viewers on the dam cam, Hukumuri, or... That there was calling around two o'clock in the morning on the dam cam and some of the landowners had followed him all the way back west again sort of during game drive time which means it wasn't him who was calling it was Tingana back in the area probably investigating going, who is this challenger to my throne uh, 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 uh. yes can you imagine now I think we should, I don't think we've done it today, but in the new year, we're going to put together a little package of the calls to see how many of us can get them right by hearing, ooh, that must be Tingana, that must be Hukumori, because I don't think I could do it. I hear a leopard sawing. Challenge, yeah, Emma says it's a nice challenge, because I don't think I'd be able to tell the difference. A lion calling is a lion. It's quite difficult to tell male versus female sometimes. And I can tell the difference between male and female leopards because of the duration of the call, but to differentiate between the two, I just don't think I have the audio capacity to do so but I suppose with some practice we will definitely be able to do that but anyway the Duke of Juma is still on Juma Sydney is searching for him hopefully we will be able to find him at some stage this afternoon I'm not sure where you would like me to go next Emma but uh, we could oh yes I did forget I do for do apologize well when we are talking about Hukumuri moving in to the property and Tingana holding his dukedom there's reasons for that and well it's not just because of Tandi she also has Tlalamba and there she is the beautiful little one I remember seeing her in the beginning of the year January very close to camp little Tlalamba was a little bit skittish in the beginning a little bit unsure of what we were, what we were doing. She's got big ears like her older brother, Tamba. And well, wasn't she just the most precious thing? Now tell me folks that that's not the cutest thing on this planet. <laughs> Baby elephants may be coming quite close, but little Tlamba being able to be so close to her, she was, I think this was the time she was stalking a Franklin, if I recall. But she has just been growing and growing and growing, and I haven't seen her yet. Look at that. She has become a little beast, and the ears are still growing. 
and what a beautiful cat she has been. I think very privileged to have been where we've been. Only two, three minutes away from where we spent some time with her in their beginning stages at the den site. But throughout the year, Tandi has been teaching her the important lessons of how to feed. As you can see from here in the early stages, Tlalumba could only eat on the ground. She didn't have the capacity to feed in the tree. And while well, that led to all sorts of difficulties considering how our hyena population follows them around and even when Tandi made the very skillful um, attachment or hoisting of individual carcasses like this the little naughty Tlalumba would try and move it and it would always end up on the ground where invariably it would likely get stolen but the trip down memory lane and this was when we had Tandi getting an injury we still don't 100% know what happened uh, but the last time I saw her she just had a little bit of a scar there and she was walking perfectly well a very very successful huntress those are the sort of elements that can lead to the demise of a cat being injured uh, luckily it was just a fleshy sort of wound if it was a ligament or tendon well that is a surefire way to stop a leopard from hunting but the playfulness continues and the normally very irate looking tandy was so often seen this year in a really beautiful play with her daughter and hopefully these scenes will continue to wonder us for time and time because well as we would expect Tlalumba will carve out a piece of her mum's territory and will stay within the borders of Juma hopefully considering we don't seem to have a female leopard sort of on our western side sort of uh, west of Vuitella Pan Tani seems to have really taken up that side around Drakensberg and Mamba area towards the tortured side maybe Tlalumba will carve out a piece on this side I hope that's the case but it seems at the moment that she's spending a lot of time on tortured around tortured dam so she might be spending some time there and that might be the new territory that she wants to move into but that's also an area of um kuchava she likes to move through and yes trish we were on the edge of our seats many many a sighting as we wondered and worried where the naughty mischievous playful Tlalumba was and tundi would call and i remember those moments when we waited they felt like hours and suddenly out of the long grass came the little one charging through to mum and then I remember a few times Tani looking a little bit displeased at the absence of her youngster for whatever period of time it had been and I know that all of our hearts were in our mouths and well our hearts just melted at the reunion that was always very very special now I haven't seen Columbus in September so I'm hoping to see her again I think I'm going to be quite amazed it's hard to see on the screen but to see them in person sometimes to just see the growth that they've gone through and the space between the spots it really just goes to show the change in the color giraffe girl you reckon as well that she's carving out tortured well she's definitely been spending a lot of time there um, it is also we believe part of uh, Tingana's territory he does range far and wide and while it's definitely an important property for us to to get our teeth into to spend some time it is a beautiful area and well hopefully we'll get to find her and find her at some stage with oh well Columba and Tandi hopefully will be able to be seen many many times in the coming year we've had an absolutely crazy year with the two of them and well Sydney is on the search or is he Look at what I have got at the moment, and apologies for the pole. We just got Tandy here. She was um, just heading much more towards the drainage line. You can see she's slowly moving towards that side. We are going to keep following. This is beautiful. Unexpectedly, while looking for Tingana, then we came across the unexpected visitor. Look at that. Look at that now. <laughs> Look at her. She is just now uh, defecating there. <laughs> you can see the this is beautiful this is quite a lovely sighting i was not expecting to come across tandy here <laughs> so i was uh, looking for tingana and i have checked everywhere so where tandy is coming out from is an area where we heard the uh, distress call of the warthog this morning she just came from there so it means this morning when we heard that noise from the warthog she knows what happened. Tandy is accountable. So I'm just going to drive around so that we can get 
uh, Tanamba is not very close. Who is close now is the Avokas. The distance between uh, Tandi and Avokas is just less than 500 meters. She is passing by that area. I was heading to the Avokas when I got here just now. So now she's going to the drainage line, but I will show you. So while I'm going down to the drainage line for a better position, let me uh, check what has been happening. Tandi has been up to a lot of things during the week. The Queen of Juma looked over her domain without her heir by her side. With Kalamba spotted around Torchwood, Tandi appears to be on her own. In an effort to avoid the effects of her empty nest, Tandi directed her focus to food, as her flickering tail followed closely behind her. Tandi just got disappeared somewhere here, somewhere in front. So I'm gonna have to be very careful and see if we can find her again. I'm so happy to see Tandi by the last day of 2018. Let's quickly cross over to the Masai Mara and see what David is having at the moment. Very well done, Sydney. Very well done, and whoo -hoo -hoo, congratulations. But now, uh, Sydney, I have a question for you because I requested you to look for the boys' leopards, not to look for Tandy because I'm sure you all know Tandy is a female. I gave Sydney a choice of Hukumuri or Hosanna. Oops, sorry, there's a car behind me that wants to pass. And. Uh, well, to get uh, Tandy, that's pretty special. So I'm going to slow down a little bit because that car won't give me so much dust and I do not want to eat his dust. So I'm going to give him a few seconds for him to keep going. But yeah, very good news to see Tandy and uh, at the very end of the year. So I left my lions and I'm thinking I either have to look for the Savocat or for something else along the way which could be exciting. I'm looking, I'm looking very hard. So let me see how things look. So, Paul, I'm gonna to come to you in a minute. You pembe, you pembe? What people? Safi. Well, you may have to bring me that question again from Paula. I was just saying hello to my friend and James wishing him Happy New Year. Sorry, there was a question from Paula. I truly apologize for that. Paula, how are you today and happy new year, Paula. It's a one day before we get there. And your question is, do I think the dynamics will change here because of rainfall? I would say no, because, you know, lions are very sedentary animals. They do not move with the prey. But herbivores like the wildebeest and the zebras, in general, will tend to move with the rain, and more so the wildebeest. Now, at the moment, they are almost all of them in Serengeti National Park in Tanzania because they have to bring down or they have to cover that particular area. And when they come back here next year, we shall have gone through the long rains and all the grass you see here, Paula, will be quite tall. So herbivores will move sometimes through the weather and more so the rainfall. But lions will remain where they are. So with rain or no rain, for example, the Ololos will always be in their territory. The sausage tree pride in their territory, the Mara River pride, the Paradise pride, all lion prides will tend to remain where they are, regardless of the rainfall, because they are very territorial and they always make sure they do not exceed their boundaries. They can extend so much, they can push so much, but they'll always make sure they don't get into conflict with another pride. All right, so many guys still looking. So there's a huge truck here that we call uh overlanders so just gonna give them way for them to pass and i'm just gonna shout them happy new year happy new year happy new year everybody and they're excited guys and in that truck you've seen there they'll always carry about 40 passengers in that truck 40 and they do it very rough you know they'll wash their own clothes make their own food Julio, that's a very good question and you'd like to know whether we have 
any update on the North Clan. Not at the moment. I'll tell you for what reason. The area where we have always seen the North Clan Julio has been very muddy and the short trains that we've been having the last couple of weeks made that area inaccessible and we were not able even to get anywhere close to one kilometer from the waffles and we thought we don't want to go there and get stuck so we have no idea you know what could be happening now the last we spoke we spoke with the girls who have been doing some research there we got some girls from michigan state university and they didn't you know they said they have been trying to get there but it has been very difficult for them to go there because of the road conditions but i'm sure once it dries up they'll be able to access it maybe before us and they'll give us a feedback and talking of hyenas and more so the north clan steve has a lot to tell us in the tent just having a bit of fun with my friend the tortoise and well anyway these are very hard shells that we saw the Uncle Uma pride breaking through earlier this year and pulling the animal out of the house there and well animals that have got very very strong and powerful jaws there's no better example of them out here in the African wilderness than up in the Mara Triangle with the North Clan well many moments were spent at the den site this year Jamie Patterson became the leading hyena expert and well weren't there many scenes of the youngsters at play the dynamics are so so interesting to watch as you can see the youngsters they're learning exactly how to sit and to fit into hyena society they will chase birds they will play with sticks all the important elements of living around a den site and well sometimes discipline is in order it's not often you find a female disciplining someone else's youngster unless she is on higher rank yes i know we do we all miss the north clan i believe the area got flooded in the rains and who knows where they are at the moment very efficient hunters very efficient players entertainers of the highest order what more will we see in the coming months well David, I'm sure, will be spending time and following them as soon as he can get his wheels through the thick mud of the open plains. And if you've been out there in the dry season, it's quite accessible. But after the rains, Gigi has been detailing, well, it is incredible to imagine trying to drive a vehicle on a muddy track that you just don't have the traction. So you need a four-wheel drive to be through there. But I mean, I got there in February and it was difficult to driving in places of the marsh where there'd been a lot of rain. And, well, it gets very tricky. And if you want to become part of the Marshmallow Club, well, then you're going to have to go into the Mara Triangle with David at the moment because he's not spending too much time spending out there due to the fact that, as I said, enormous rains have fallen in the past few months. But anyway, Sydney seems to have moved off from Tundi. I'm not quite sure where. So I am going to adopt the song, Long Leave Avoca Long Leave. Look at what I've got now. So this is a song I'm taking from one of the viewers, as the viewers suggested earlier about Long Leave Tingana. Now it's Long Leave Avoca Enter 2019. You can see Avocas are right on the road, less than 200 meters away from where we have just lost Tandy. Because of the signals, I left 200 meters to come to show you the avocas. I will go back because she's mobile in the de in, in the dry river bed. So we're still gonna watch her and hopefully still gonna find Tingana if possible. So you can see that the avocas are very much relaxed. <laughs> uh, Arbiad, look at that um, paw. This is lovely, nice and clear not disturbed by anything. This is what we normally see on the ground. This is what helps us markings in order to track down this animal like we did this morning. We found them because of a good tracking. Look at how they're sleeping there. One facing this side and the other one facing the other side. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> and this is beautiful. So they're all looking very hungry. Look at that. Yeah, it looks like uh, one lion with two heads. 
So the avocas, you know, they are the ones who are every time going after the unkuhumas. And these are the ones who are mating with the unkuhumas. So now I am going to quickly leave the avocas because they are stationary and go back because I can see that the other vehicles who are following Tandi, they are keep following her very quickly that side. Maybe she is now bringing us some interesting actions before 2019. So things are happening here. Yeah. She is now avoiding, uh, she is moving away from the lions. And uh, when we found her, she was on a direction towards there, but something else fascinated her. She decided to change direction. And now she is somewhere down here. Hopefully, we're going to find her again at any time from now. So this is going to be a nice closing of 20. <laughs> yeah, today is a long live cat's day. Long day. Long live cat's day. So I can see that uh, she crossed somewhere behind me. Oh, there, there, she, there they are. I can see the other people are having a sighting right there. So it means she is uh, moving up somewhere here. So I'm going to have to go to the other side. And I will be there just now. Otherwise, you're not going to see her. I think where we are going to see her now, it will be the best position ever. As now she climbed the drainage and she is coming up somewhere here. If I don't meet her now, we might not see her nicely. She is coming somewhere here. So I can see there's a car driving behind her. So now while I am coming here, in order to show you a Tandy, uh, we can cross over to the Masai Mara and see David with the big animal. Well, now, Sydney, I was talking earlier, I requested you to do something and you disobeyed me and you decided to look for Tandy, which was good. Now, because you wanted to beat me at the end of this year and you got Tandy, which was very exciting, I thought I'd do something different in Kenya and have found myself a black rhino with her baby. Well, I thought I'm going to up my game a little bit. So between me and you, Sydney, we need to compete. I had given you pressure before. I'm giving you now more pressure. You need to get something more precious than a black rhino. So ladies and gentlemen, we've got a black rhino in the Mar Triangle. And this is so exciting because she got her young one with her. I mean, full, almost fully grown calf. Very good. As you try to get closer to this rhino, let's first. You can see that now Tandy is coming right here to us to say goodbye 2018. Next year is tomorrow. I will be eating something today for the last time this year. As I can see, she is on a hunting mood. When we found her, she was looking at something. And now I can see again that she is listening, concentrating, and she is going much more towards this side. She is on a hunt at the moment. You can see the look, look at that. You can see how she's raising the ears. Apologies for the pole. You can see how she's raising uh, those ears. That she is on a hunt. She's looking for something. You can see there she stopped. When she's looking at that side, beautiful. This is a gorgeous tandy. Long live Tandy, long live. I didn't sing for her. <laughs> yeah, and look at that, now she's going there. So I, I think I'm still owing Tandy a song because I sang the song to the Avocas and to the uh, Tingana. Just want to see what she's up to. Sami J, indeed, Tandy is on a mission. 
we want to see the kind of mission she's having at the moment. Deja vu, indeed, the tail on this kind of animals, you can use them because they showcase quite a lot of internal thinking about the animal. Look at the tail, look at the movement. We're not really sure what she's aiming, but you can see she's going nicely and we don't want to disturb this. We want to see if she's going to be lucky and take something, the last bit of 2018. <laughs> she must be looking for the New Year snack. Long live Tandy, long live. So this is going to be my signature song now. You can see that action of a leopard dance. It will be punctuated with that. I have adopted the song from one of the viewers. So it's the begin it will be the beginning of New Year. When you hear the song, you must know something is coming. Something with the sport <laughs> is coming. If not with the sport, it will be the other big cats, lions. That is a song which will be associated with lions and leopards. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have to reverse a little bit so that we can. Yes, Nola, you can see now she is right there. She's just now relaxed. Apologies here, I'm not alone in the sighting. I do have some other vehicles here. You know, it's so interesting because the last sighting of Tingana, the distance between Tingana's last sighting and Tandi, it was just less than 500 meters. And the distance between Tandi and Avokas was less than 250 meters. So things were happening. This morning, I heard a Watok giving a distress call. We went there and checked everywhere. We didn't see anything. And Tingana was not in that area. It was spotted somewhere far, a little bit away from that. But now I can see who was uh, chasing or who caught a small Watok this morning. Must be Tandy because it was happening behind us. I had to leave Avokas to go and check. But she came from that block. So now we're just going to quickly um, take you back to David and wait here a little bit. After this, we will quickly go back to Twinsdam and see if Tingana is not going to drink there because he was left in the same area. Tandy might pull a surprise and maybe she goes for a hunt. Who knows? Now, in Africa, we got two species of rhinos. We got black rhinos and white rhinos. What we got here, uh, two black rhinos and I think it's a mother and a fully grown calf. In general, rhinos are very solitary, but of course when you see a mother and a young one, there'll be two or a male and a female, two or a male and a female and a young one, three. The white ones, they're more social. It's quite unusual to see one white one. You'll see it once in a while on its own, but in general, the white rhinos are more social and they'll go in small little groups or herds, two, three, sometimes even up to five. Well, that's one major difference in terms of behavior between the blacks and the white. And another important behavior or another important difference between these two species of rhinos is their feeding habits. Now, the black rhinos, we say, in general, they are browsers. Browsers because, like that particular one you see there, is, which is black, is not eating grass. What she is doing is she is picking small little plants, small little bushes, small little twigs, as she walks. And if you look carefully, she is not bothered to touch the grass. Now, the white rhinos, we say they're grazers, and basically they'll be feeding on grass. So, 
ideally, I would say, we see more white rhinos than black rhinos in Africa because they tend to be grazing on the grass and they tend, of course, to be in more open areas. A third difference between the two, these ones that we have here are a little shy, a little aggressive, a little grumpy because they're not used to seeing people or vehicles, while the white rhinos are easy to deal with. How lucky. So, because of their feeding habits, Emu, very good question, don't rhinos eat grass? So it's exactly what I was saying, Emu, that the black rhinos will be eating twigs, leaves, shrubs, little branches, because they are browsers. But the white rhinos, Emu, they will not eat any of the above, but they only eat grass. And talking of that difference in the feeding habit, I'm not sure this particular female won't come and say hello to us as we close the ear. They got different shapes of mouth, so another important difference between these two and the black rhinos like the one we have here have like a triangular shaped like mouth while the white rhinos have a rectangular shaped mouth a rectangular shaped mouth a mouth that looks like of a hippo because they need to cut and graze as they eat the grass now with the black ones having the triangular shaped is like a prehensile lip that they need to grasp the leaves like where well, here's or some little twigs to feed on and we have always thought, if you see two, both of them together, the black and white, they're ideally the same. The color doesn't really count to tell them apart. Well, I want to see what direction she'll go or whether she's going to turn around us. If she doesn't, I'll try and go a little closer. In the meanwhile, I'll take you back to Steve in the tent. Well, Gigi, thank you very much. And what an action-packed afternoon we are having. Tundi just mysteriously popping out of nowhere. Was it my words once again that made it happen? We don't know. It seems to be happening all the time now and Gigi putting in some effort and finding a black rhino family. Very, very special indeed to be able to see these large giants on the landscape. And indeed, they were not feeding on grass, just little forbs on the ground, because that is what they feed on. There's plenty of them in the long grass that just don't survive the fires that move through there periodically. But anyway, we've been having lots and lots of fun down in Juma. Um, I've only been back since uh, only about two weeks, but while I was up in the Maasai Mara, they managed to stumble across the hyena den. Raising cubs can be tiring work for a hyena mum. With the attack from their vocal male still fresh, Corky, the matriarch, remains ever vigilant around the den. The Juma clan's cubs, seemingly unfazed by their mother's concern, grow more curious by the day. These new members of the clan continue to investigate the entirety of their surroundings. Playtime not only develops important skills, but teaches the cubs the importance of rank in hyena society. The Juma clan and the Corky's leadership look strong, and we can only watch and see how these new playful members integrate. Well, there have been some marks of differences between the North Clan and the Juma Clan, and it's very interesting to be able to compare the different strategies and sort of ways of sort of hyena sort of way about. But the society itself is very similar. Obviously, the size of the clans down here much, much smaller due to the different sort of feeding strategies that they have. And such well-documented hunters and well no doubt over the coming months in the new year we'll be able to delve deeper and deeper into the differences and to be able to record this for you live because what you read in many books is indeed and hopefully no more a lion attacks from the evoker males on Corky. But um, what you read in the books, there's always such conflicting information and anything you've done is a study in an area about a species. And there is a big running debate between the Mara project study and one in Ngorogoro Crater. And they just don't really like each other. They come up with different results. So they think, well, some of them think that the other people are wrong. But if you look at the hyenas of the Mara, 
versus hyenas of Juma, they are in a very different way of things. Obviously, the way that they greet and do what they do is quite similar, but the feeding, uh, their, their, their size, the competition with the other predators is just a very different way of things happening. But over the next few years, maybe we'll be able to delve in and spend way more time with these clans and so maybe even get something really, really, really relevant out there so that the world can see that the species have evolved and adapted to live in very different environments. Sienak, well, thank you. Um, it's just, you know, my experience of seeing the clans up there and seeing the clans down here, they behave differently. I mean, here they have to pick up scraps. I've never seen hyena here pull down an animal. Um, in the Mara, it's seen all the time. Maybe we just don't see what goes on after dark, but we find them here to be very, very big scavengers following our leopard around, uh, not even bothering to try to fight the lion off. And while well, up in the Mara, just dominating at a very different level altogether. But the temperature over the last two weeks has been extremely warm, and I I have no doubt that has influenced the movements and activity around the den, probably making them more active sort of at those sort of midnight, sort of 10.30 in the evening sort of hour when it is much cooler than it is at our general game drive time because, well, it's been very, very hot temperatures. And the times we have had them out, temperatures have been rather cool and rather accommodating. So we are going to be watching these clans, both in the north and in the south with much interest and well while we do that we'll always be jumping between the two locations because up in the Masai Mara David with his rhino is always a very special spectacle well we always have a lot of parallels to make between Juma and the Mara and I like making my parallels of animals that we have in Juma and that we do not have here but let's talk now about the hyenas as Steve was talking about. Hyenas same because both the hyenas here are the same species like we have in the Juma Den uh, in well where Steve and Sidon are but the only difference I would say is the numbers. For example I can't remember very well how many hyenas we have the den we have in the den in Juma but the one clan here that we have followed for a very long time is the North Clan and the North Clan has over 70 members, over 70 members and that's a huge number by any standard and it's always a very fierce group to deal with because when lions do hunt and the North Clan know they always get there very quickly and they intimidate the lions by sheer of their numbers and they'll take over the kiln that they have. Well, our black rhino, I thought initially going to walk towards us, but he took a different direction. And because they're always very sensitive to noise, I thought I'll stop who I am and don't start the kinding and chance if he or rather she would come towards where we are and she did not. And before we went back to the tent to Steve over, I guess. And this year we had some wonderful time because initially there's a time we were doing a drive and we found some lions and some elephants. The lions were on top of a tree and the elephants were not very impressed and they tried to intimidate the lion to come out of the tree. And the, you know, the lions had no choice, they jumped out and they took off. But not far from there, there were some like rhinos, black rhinos, and they had a little calf and there was a very big standoff between the rhinos and the elephants. It was pretty exciting to see that. Elephants somehow do not tag along very well with rhinos. But of the big mammals here in uh, Africa, we have seen buffaloes, you know, mixing with rhinos comfortably as much as they don't have any commonality. And you see black rhinos just walking through uh, big herds of buffalo. So that's the little baby or the fully out grown calf of that particular Rhino, and looking at the IUCN red wrist, we would say the, uh, there's a bit of concern more on the black rhinos than the white rhinos. And Colin, you're asking, are they related, the black and the white? They are not related, and they also behave differently. They got different lifespans, they got different gestation periods. And Colin, I would say, we got people who at one time tried to cross breed between these two different species and it did not work very well. So they're not related 
and they have not even been able, like, thinking this is a rhino, it's another rhino, but because this is black and this is white, try to crossbreed. The morphology is also very different, so they are not related at all, and we have not had any success of trying to get a hybrid between those two rhinos. Well, I may need to, to move on because it's getting a little bit dark where I am, and maybe see if we could get one more chance to go close to that rhino. Who knows? I can just see her, you know, walking and the calf walking behind her slowly, slowly. Let me just keep moving and see what happens in the next few minutes. I had also plans to look for a savocat. I have not forgotten. And in the bush, like my friend sitting like saying, anything is possible. And things are always very unpredictable here. And I think Sydney want to prove a point today at being the last day of the year. He's done, or he thinks he has done very well turning the female. Now he wants to look for a male. Who knows? Uh, Tandy decided to get disappeared thick into the bushes and she just got disappeared. So I am back now trying to check here because where we found her and where Hosanna was last, Tingana was last spotted this morning is just about less than 500 meters. Maybe the warthog we heard making noise earlier giving a distress call was caught here. Maybe Tingana went and took over. I just want to try and check where she was if there is nothing around. Earlier on this week, our favorite leopard, Hosanna, was trying to find something this week. Hosanna was still hungry and on the move for some breakfast. The little chief still impatient with his youth, especially when he's hungry. The Stienbok avoided Hosanna with little effort, leaving him to sulk before finding a scrub hair and started to stalk again. So you can see that uh, Hosanna still has got a long way to go. We cannot compare Hosanna with the well-experienced hunters like Tandy. Tandy is very good at hunting and the skills transfers, she did very well to Talamba. Uh, Hosanna is still impatient a little bit. So this is the area where she came from and I'm just checking if maybe we, okay. can, we cannot find any other leopard. As this leopard, they do interact when there's food. So now let's quickly go to the tented Steve. Well, it seems as if Tandy has given Sydney the ever or the never ending Tandy slip, the famous Tandy slip. Well, she's so good at doing that. And I think his judgment call there that maybe she caught a young warthog and maybe Tingana is on the scene. Well, that does sound quite real for what we've seen many, many times in this area. But Emma just asked me to try and try and it's a very hard decision or hard thing to chat about a recap of what my sightings of this year and James Richard is asking what my dream sighting would be well James up in the Mara I really wanted to see a proper battle royal between hyena and lion I didn't see it I saw the Aweno pride displaced off of a kill really easily without too much effort by what we thought was the North clan at the time and it was just a little bit of a of a letdown to be honest but um Dream sightings, that's very hard to say. There are so many amazing, wonderful things out here. But just the leopards here continue to amaze. I think I had one of my dream sightings this year, which entailed a little fellow over here. Now, most of you probably don't know what this is at first glance, but you can see that it's got some nice sharp teeth there. And it's definitely a carnivore. Got the carnassial shear here. And for a carnivore, it has got the largest brain. Look at that brain casing over there. It is enormous for the size. And this is my favorite animal, the honey badger. And, well, those of you who did not see that sighting with us, I had the honey badger for probably close to two hours with VM. And at Hunter Day, monitored it and 
figured out how to find the monsters in the tree. The monsters got up the tree, went up after it, and uh, it was just the most incredible thing I've ever seen. Being my favorite animal, I haven't managed to spend enough time with them in my life, and, well, very blessed to have done so, and only meters off of the road. It went on for a very long time. I know a lot of the viewers were quite distressed at the movement and the rigors, wriggling of the, um, the monitor lizard that was surely dead, but it took a long time for the body to stop moving. It was quite difficult to see, especially when the honey badger removed most of the face and then started pulling the tongue out of the face. It was really quite something. And VM was in his absolute artistic genius and he was framing right in there on the teeth and the blood and gore. And well, it certainly was not for sensitive viewers, but that was very special. And I think every day out here, it's just magnificent to be able to spend time with the animals that we do. And I think truly we are very blessed. And it's very hard in a one, a two hour, sorry, two hour show to catch you up with the year we've had behind us. Almost impossible, I think, because, you know, we've tried to put clips together. Then there's action. There's rhinos, there's lions, there's leopards. And what can you do but fill the gaps with some special moments. But David up in the Mara has been with us some time as well. I wonder what his favorite sighting of the year was. Was it Juma? Was it in the Mara? Well, I'm looking on the last day of 2018, which is today. And I'm thinking, you know what? This year I have had some wonderful sighting and I've always said every day you are here in the African bush is a different day. Every day you do a drive, it's just like how you read a book and you finish one chapter and get excited to go to the next chapter. And if I look at all the chapters I've gone through and all the sightings I've had, I think my very best one, I hope James Richard you're still there because we I think you're a great guy on how you keep following us and how you keep helping us identify some of these uh, cats especially. The one sighting I had that's going to be given my memory for 2018 is the one male that we call Kipuli. Kipuli is a male lion that's always found around the sausages girls or the sausage tree uh, pride. And there were two male lions that came from Tanzania, from Serengeti National Park. And they just came around, you know, and they thought they would take over that particular area. And they found one female that's called Butternut. Butternut belongs to another pride called the Owinos. And they were nomadic males, and they still remain nomadic because they saw them the other day, they always come in and out. And they started mating with that female, Butternut of the Owinos. And Kipulu was about 100, 150 meters watching them, meeting, and about 9 o'clock in the morning, he engaged one of the nomadic males and, you know, saw him off in under five minutes. And later on the same day, he came back, waited for the other male that was mating to continue mating, and in the afternoon, he gave him a combat and he took off and back to Tanzania. Well, that remains one of my biggest sightings in 2018. And let's go back to the gentleman, Sydney. You can see now that uh, the weather is encouraging the avocas to stand and have a look at what is happening in the area at the moment. All I'm seeing from where we are is just the impalas and nothing big. I don't think they will be interested on that. They are looking very big and having high stomach holding capacity. I think the impala is nothing to these two avocas. So you can see that the new year, they will enter the new year in Juma. <laughs> they are now looking at the western side. So it means they will enter this 2019 here in Juma Game Reserve. <laughs> Look at that. And this is quite an amazing sight. And you can see that uh, these lions are enjoying themselves and they're not even worried about anything. So they are just very much relaxed now we're gonna see them nice and clear look at that so now um this brings us to the end of 2018 with me and enjoy happy new year
David having marvellous sightings with Kupuli and New Year's in Juma, which those of you who don't know is the roar of the lion. So hopefully as the clock strikes 12 this evening, we'll hear these two boys calling their defiance to the world. And well, we have had a smashing year. I have been here for most of it, as has David. And well, it has been awesome. Let's go and have a look exactly what took place. As we look back on 2018, Safari Lives has brought you up close and personal with some of your favorite characters. The animals reach new, if somewhat unexpected, heights. We were treated to assortment of rare and special sightings with honey badgers embracing the spotlight. This year has seen us brought to the edge of our seats as we bear witness to the age-old battle of predator versus prey. Others stood their ground against unusual foes. And with a new generation on the horizon, our collection of characters is sure to expand. Through moments of quiet relief, and moments of deafening power. 2018 has brought us closer to the wild and to all the friends and foe that call it home. Well, I forgot about the bat-eared foxes. That was special. That was very special. It's impossible, folks, to capture a year in one little clip. And, well, it's impossible to even recap it properly in two hours. I think Emma and Luke in FC have done a marvellous job, though, of bringing forward some of those very special moments uh, that you have bore bad witness with us this year. I forgot to mention that live buffalo birth that I experienced down at Chitwit with... with uh, uh, Seb and it just continues folks. We will be able to watch these things You could walk out the corner and something can happen right here right now You have to stay tuned in you have to stay watching the show because who knows what could happen any moment any day The time will come time will tell anything could happen in the Juma and the Mara reserves and while we will be here to record it for you Don't ever forget to keep your questions and comments coming. You are an integral part of the team. We thank you for the year 2000 2018 to the Mara and Juma staff. Have a beautiful, beautiful evening and happy 2018. Goodbye.